This message is not for the fearful, cowards, or the unbelieving. If you fall into either of those categories, stop the disc now and pass it on to someone else. This is Shirley J. N. Johnson, April 13th, 2012. This message is titled, T.D. Jakes Protecting Paula White. This is disc one. I'm creating this message at this time because I watched a short video of T.D. Jakes on um, Praise 103.9's website. Now the statements that T.D. Jakes made to a group of people on Praise 103.9 concerning forgiveness and justice were the exact opposite of what he preached concerning forgiveness and justice at Without Walls International Church in Tampa, Florida on March 16th, 2012. Now, T.D. Jakes has been going around the country from church to church peddling his book titled Let It Go. Now for those of you who may not know, T.D. Jakes wrote that book mainly for the purpose of defending Paula White. That's why he wrote the book. It was to defend Paula White. Now I haven't read the book, but I imagine there's probably something in his book that that we all probably can benefit from and apply to our own personal lives regarding forgiveness. But again, the main reason that T.D. Jakes wrote that book was in defense of Paula White. And that's why his message on forgiveness is contradictory. He preached one thing to the people at Without Walls Church. And then he comes and speaks a completely different message regarding forgiveness to the listening audience of 103.9. Not even a month later. But again, the reason for that is because he was trying to defend Paula White when he spoke at Without Walls International Church. Now he's claiming to be enlightening people. He's going from, like I said, church to church, state to state, city to city, preaching one thing. But when it comes to Without Walls International Church, all of a sudden it changes. You'll see what I mean. Stay with me through this entire message. This might be a fairly long message by the time I'm finished. But stay with me because I'm trying to, to show you. I've, I've, I've warned people for years about T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes is not who you think he is. Yes, he is a grand orator. Yes, he's a smooth talker. Most con people are. But he's not who you think he is. T.D. Jakes is not even a Christian. Neither is Paula White. So I want to show you because if he truly, now he claims that God mandated him to write this book on forgiveness. God mandated him to write this book on forgiveness and preach the message of forgiveness. I'll say it again, going from church to church, preaching the message of forgiveness because God mandated him to do so. So if God mandated him to do so, his message should have been consistent and the same from church to church. God says, what I say unto one, say I unto all. So let's listen to some of the clips of T.D. Jakes on forgiveness. We'll start with the clips of what he stated to Praise 103.9 regarding George Zimmerman. And I, said, I, don't, I don't see it as revenge at all. Revenge is a lynching. It's, it's, it's a mobbing. It's finding him on a dirt road and stabbing him in the eye. That's revenge. To, to, to require of a civilized society equal justice in no way is a contradiction to, to, to forgiveness. How can we forgive what we are grumbling to understand? what he has not confessed. That, that, that is not revenge at all. It is not, it is not revenge, it is justice. Yes. Even if the pursuit of justice leads us to the point that what we think is not correct, we still had every right to demand it. Now you heard T.D. Jakes speaking regarding George Zimmerman, the man who murdered Trayvon Martin. Now again, we know that T.D. Jakes has written a book on forgiveness, and as I stated earlier, he's been going from church to church preaching and teaching on forgiveness and mercy. Now, he stated that to want justice is not revenge. 
he stated that to require equal justice of a civilized society is in no way a contradiction to forgiveness. He said, and we have a right to demand justice. Now I want you to get your pencil and paper and uh, take some notes because, or if you have a good memory, remember that. Remember those words because we're going to come back to this. Remember, equal justice, keep that in mind or write it down. He said, to want equal justice is in no way a contradiction to forgiveness. And he said, we have a right to demand justice. He said, how can we forgive what he, meaning Zimmerman, George Zimmerman, how can we forgive what he has not confessed? Okay? So T.D. Jakes is requiring a confession from George Zimmerman. In other words, admitting that he's guilty. So T.D. Jakes is requiring a confession from this man before he can be forgiven. And he's demanding justice. Okay? Keep that in mind. Write it down or keep it in your mind if you have a good memory. Let's go to the next clip. What we are asking of our society is justice. Yes. Whatever that is, truth, whatever that is. And I don't, I don't think that that's too much to ask, and I'm not at all conflicted. I'm on the road with the book saying, let it go. Yeah, yeah. And everywhere I go, they ask this question. There is no conflict here. Right, right. Yeah, because you cannot seek forgiveness for a person who perpetrates as innocent or a judicial system that says we have gone through due process and have not. Uh, the, the issue is, had, had, had our people not screened, it wouldn't have been on CNN. That's right, that's right. It wouldn't have been on Fox. Now you heard T.D. Jake say that what we are asking of our society is justice. He said whatever that is, truth, whatever that is, he wants, we're asking justice. You heard the people in the audience agreeing with him. He stated that it's not too much for us to ask for justice. That's not too much for us to ask to want justice. And he stated that you cannot seek forgiveness for a person who perpetrates his innocence or a judicial system that says that they've already gone through the process and they have not. Keep that in mind. Write it down. We cannot seek forgiveness for a person who perpetrates his innocence or a judicial system that says they've gone through the due process and have not. He stated that if our people, meaning the black people, had not screamed, it would not have been on CNN or Fox. Keep that in mind. But remember, you can't seek forgiveness for a person who perpetrates his innocence or a judicial system that says they've gone through the due process and have not. Let's go to the next clip. And I think the issue is not Zimmerman and, and, and whether he did or did not do it, but a judicial system that has looked the other way one time too many. Now there you heard T.D. Jakes make the statement that the issue is not whether Zimmerman did or did not do it, meaning murder Trayvon Martin. He said, but it's about a judicial system that has looked the other way one time too many. And again, you heard the crowd clapping and agreeing with what he said. Let's go to the next clip. Keep that in mind. A judicial system that has looked the other way too many times. Write that down. Keep it in your mind if you have a good memory. Because we're going to talk about this again. Because these are parts of the contradictions that I'm going to show you clearly. How can you be so uh, straightforward and so adamant about a certain subject and then do a complete about face within a not even a 30 day period I mean if this is what you stand for this is what you stand for period let's go to the next clip and, and, and an insult against any of us is an insult against all of us when all of us pay the taxes and pay the wages of the elected officials who don't want to be held accountable this is bigger now you heard T.D. Jakes state that an insult against any of us is an insult against all of us. He said we pay the taxes and wages of the elected officials who don't want to be held accountable. Remember that. An insult against any of us is an insult against all of us. And we are paying 
their wages to boot. Okay, you heard those clips. This was T.D. Jakes, again, speaking to a group of people at Praise 103.9. I believe that was on April the 2nd that I saw this video of him. Now I want you to listen to T.D. Jakes speaking on the same subject of forgiveness at Without Walls International Church in Tampa, Florida on March 16th, 2012. Just less than one month earlier, this is what he had to say. This is what he's preaching about forgiveness. But before I go to the clips, I w let, let me say this. I believe starting sometime in February is when T.D. Jake started his book tour. And he preached to several different churches before he even got to Without Walls International Church. He had preached the message of forgiveness. So on this next clip, I want you to hear T.D. Jakes say with his own mouth that he had been preaching this message to all these different churches and he preached the same message. But when he got to Without Walls International Church, he said that God, they, all, they love to lie on God. They love to lie on God. He said God told him, when you get to Without Walls International Church, preach on the same subject of forgiveness but preach from a different perspective to these people. Don't preach from the same perspective that you preached to all those other churches before that. Preach to without walls from a different perspective, you see. Let's go to the clip and I'll, and I'll come right back. I'm excited to be here. I'm glad for God's goodness and grace. Uh, I'm, I believe that God's given me a word for this house. I've been on a speaking tour and uh, I'm going to be on the same subjects that I've been talking about elsewhere, but he gave me a different perspective to approach it tonight. And I believe somebody in here is going to get a breakthrough tonight. Now, all the other churches that he preached at before he got to Without Walls International Church, he preached from the same perspective. So they came away pretty much with the same message. But when he preached to Without Walls International Church, Again, he said that God gave him a different perspective from which to preach to this group of people on the same subject of, of forgiveness. I'll say it again, lying on God. God said, what I say unto one, say I unto all. I am God, I change not. If you are trying to get a message, and you're, if you are speaking to your family, let's, let's just take it down to the family. If you have ten children, and you're trying to... Uh, uh, teach them a certain principle. You sit them all down, basically is what you do, and you put them in the same room and you talk to them all at the same time so they can hear it the exact same way, the same perspective to all of them, so they can come away. You want them to come away with the same uh, understanding. You want them to be on one accord. You don't go off, which a lot of people do though, They'll take some their children in this room, especially when they got their little picks and choosers and favorite children. They'll take them off in the room and tell them something this way. Then they'll take the little black sheep of the family off in this room and tell them something that way. But the reason he preached from a different perspective to the people at Without Walls Church is because he was trying to defend Paula White. He was trying to defend Paula White. That's why he switched the message. That's why he preached from a different perspective because he was trying to defend Paula White. Like I said, the whole main reason that he wrote the book was in defense of her. And so when he got to the church, the reason he even made that statement about preaching from a different perspective is because some of the people that he had preached to at these other churches could possibly have been listening to him by way of internet and then hear him preaching differently. It's like, well, that's not what he preached to us at our church. So he had to already try to try to um, cover his tracks for why he was preaching a different message, basically. Same subject, but you're getting a, coming away with a different message. See, that's psychology, people. That's, that's psychology. You've got the same buzzwords, forgiveness, same subject, 
But when you come at it from a different perspective, you're going to come away with something different. And he knew that. So he knew that he probably, possibly, that people may, like I said, have heard him preaching at the other churches. So he's going to already try and cover his tracks. First of all, lied on God, said God told him to come at it from a different perspective with this group of people, you see. And so whenever they get ready to do something or get ready to do something wicked, first thing they holler, God told me. So that you'll, you'll believe them. Well, God told him. They're lying. God didn't tell him nothing. This is him trying to defend Paula White. Because if God mandated him to preach a message, again, I'll say it again, the message would be the same from church to church. And why is it that he preached from the same perspective to all the other churches, but when he gets to without walls, the perspective changes all of a sudden. Anyway, he started his message out at Without Walls International, International Church. This is how he started out his message on forgiveness. Started his message out by telling a story about slavery. About slavery and the, talking about the gates of no return and how he went to Ghana and he went and he, they took him and showed him where the slaves were held and in the caves and all of this. He, he talked for quite a while on, on this subject before he even talked about forgiveness. He started right out with slavery. Slavery and the gates of no return and all of this. So, he was trying to defend Paula White. The reason that he came, what he says, the reason why he preached from a different perspective. But it wasn't just from a different perspective. He totally contradicted the whole message of forgiveness. Now remember what we went through with Zimmerman. You wrote it down, you, you kept it in your mind. We'll come back to those points in a minute. And you're going to see that he said just the opposite. Now he's demanding justice for Zimmerman. We're not going to forgive him. We can't forgive him for something he hasn't confessed to. We can't forgive him when they're claiming innocence and they haven't gone through uh, due process in the judicial system and the, the judicial system has looked the other way one time too many. We're demanding. We have a right to demand justice. Okay? Keep that in mind. On this first clip, you will hear T.D. Jakes implying that forgiveness and mercy are interchangeable, that they are one and the same. Forgiveness is mercy and mercy is forgiveness. And forgiveness is not an idea. It's not something that you think up or dream up. Forgiveness is something that you do. Forgiveness is a big idea. It is a big and an important idea. And for it to be as big as it is, and mentioned hundreds and hundreds of times in the scripture, literally thousands of times, if you interchange forgiveness and mercy, literally thousands of times in the scripture, I, I don't hear anybody preaching about it. Now let's go to this next clip and listen to T.D. Jakes preaching about forgiveness when he spoke to the people at Without Walls International Church. And forgiveness puts me in a position that should I ever need forgiveness, I have a trust fund already built up of mercy and I don't have to be subject to justice. Now you heard T.D. Jake say that forgiveness puts him or whoever, any of us, in a position that should we ever need forgiveness, he said, I, but he's speaking to them. He's giving a message to everybody. We can all uh, apply this to our li own lives, or us personally. He said, if I ever need forgiveness, he says, I have a trust fund already built up of mercy, and I don't have to be subject to justice. Now, that's just the opposite of what he told the people at Praise 103 and anyone that was listening that day. He said there that forgiveness is in no way a contradiction to justice. Let's hear him again, what he said at Praise 103. Now, remember, at Without Walls, he told them that forgiveness means he doesn't have to be subject to justice. To, to, to require of a civilized society equal justice 
in no way is a contradiction to 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 forgiveness. Why did you hear that? Forgiveness is not a contradiction to justice. So in other words, he's saying, even if you forgive them, they still have to be brought to justice. You can forgive them, but they still have to pay for their sins or their crimes. Forgiveness does not negate justice. You still have to stand for justice. But again, the reason he preached that message the way he did at Without Walls Church, he's trying to defend Paula White. She doesn't have to ask for forgiveness. She doesn't have to confess that she has, has, has wronged the black people. Just ignore it. Let it go. Let it go. He says, forgiveness says, I'm not subject to justice. See, he doesn't want Paula White to be subject to justice like everybody else because he's trying to defend her. So why is it that Zimmerman is subject to justice but not Paula White? Because that's who he was defending. And we'll get there. We'll get there in this message and prove to you that that's what he came to do, was to defend her. So now, what are we to believe? Because, now, I heard him preach this message in both places. And maybe many other people did too. So which one of these messages are we to believe, T.D. Jakes? Are we to believe that because uh, we ask for forgiveness that we are not subject to justice? That we don't have to pay restitution, that we are not held accountable for what we do or say? Or do we have to stand justice and be held accountable for our words and deeds? So you see, he's sending uh, two, out two different messages here. But again, like I said, he preached that at church because he was trying to get those people at that church and anyone else who's listening by way of internet, like I said, to just look the other way, the, the, the very thing that he's preaching against, how the judicial system just looks the other way, one time too many. He's trying to get the people to look the other way, don't bring Paula White to justice, don't make her be accountable for what she preaches and the insults that she hurls at black people, and just forgive her. Don't make her have to come here and confess. The Bible says, if they ask for forgiveness, then you forgive them. And the Bible says you can't just come to God and say, God, forgive me for what I did to Bobby or, or to Johnny. God said, no, you first go to Bobby or Johnny and ask their forgiveness. Once you get their forgiveness, then you can come and bring your, your gift to my altar and ask me to forgiveness. But before, don't come up in my face asking me to forgive you when you have not gone and asked the person that you, that you harmed to forgive you. And this is what T.D. Jakes is trying to do. He's trying to bypass justice for Paula, but he's going to demand justice on, on Zimmerman. Let's go to the next clip, and then I'll come back and I'll tell you why he's going through such great lengths to protect Paula White, writing books on her behalf. Like I said, there's probably something in that book that we all can, can uh, benefit from and apply it to our personal lives, but that book wasn't, wasn't written for us. That book was written in defense of Paula White. These people defend each other. They couldn't give a rat's behind about the victim and those who have been wrong. Just like he stood in defense of Eddie Long. Again, that book was written in defense of Paula White. But if you can take away uh, something positive from it that will help you, good and well. But that, that wasn't his main, that's not why he wrote the book. I mean, that's good if, if it helps you out. But that book, again, I'll keep saying it. It was written in defense of Paula White. But let's go to this next clip first. Everything God gave me is mercy. If justice would have had its way, I'd have been cut off before I had anything. But when justice tried to behead me, mercy said, loose that man. Now there you heard T.D. Jakes preaching at Without Walls International Church saying that if justice had had its way, he would have been beheaded. He said, but mercy. Now remember, T.D. said that mercy and forgiveness are interchangeable. They're one and the same. If justice had had its way, he would have been beheaded. But forgiveness says, loose that man. See, he was trying to tell the people at Without Walls Church, just loose Paula White, forgive her. Don't hold her accountable. 
She doesn't have to confess her sins. She doesn't have to confess her transgressions. Just forgive her and let her go. Just let it go. But when it comes to anyone else, we are going to demand justice. And we are not going to forgive you for something you have not confessed. Anybody else? This is, this is, this is, what, you, this is what you face. But Paula White? No. She doesn't have to confess. She is not subject to justice. I'm going to stop right here. And I'll tell you why he's preaching this. And why he's contradicting himself. And then lying on God. And saying God told him to get up here and lie like this. Because God's word plainly tells us to do justice. And it doesn't matter whether you are a sinner or a saint. It doesn't matter who you are whether you uh, go to church or whether you don't, you still do justice. And it doesn't matter if it's the preacher or just the janitor that sweeps the floor. It doesn't matter if it's the bishop, the so-called bishop or the archbishop or the uh, apostolic overseer or the doctor, reverend, whatever they all these uh, big old titles they name on them, hang on themselves. It doesn't matter if it's that or just the nursery woman. You still have to be held accountable. And you still have to confess as well as anyone else. Genesis chapter 18 verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. See, this is why God chose Abraham. Because he said, I know Abraham. I know what he's going to do. That's why, that's why God chooses the people that he chooses. He already knows what you're going to do. And you'll hear them always trying to, Paula White especially, God already knew that you were going to go through a divorce and he already knew that you were going to get caught in adultery and God already knew these things and yet God still put me here. He put me in this place. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's exactly why he did not call you because he already knew you were going to shame him. He already knew you were going to disgrace him. He already knew what you would do. You were not fit to be a pastor. That's why he did not call you. God is telling you clearly right here in his word. I called Abraham because Abraham, he knew Abraham was going to keep the way of the Lord. Now, if he knew that Paula White was not going to keep his way, and then you're going to put her up there anyway to bring shame and disgrace on you, uh-uh, no. He said he will do justice and judgment. God is always concerned with justice. All throughout this Bible, you will see justice. Over and over, God is talking about justice justice. Yeah, you have mercy on people, but you still have to demand justice. Psalms 89 verse 13. Thou hast a mighty arm, strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Did you hear that? Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. And judgment means uh, whatever the sentence is for the crime that you committed. That's what judgment is. Justice and judgment are the habita habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. Listen. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. See. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord then all your tithes and offerings and all the sacrifices that you're making in whatever way you uh, intend to make a sacrifice. It's more acceptable to do justice and judgment. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. This is speaking of Jesus himself. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. 
upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with, this is how he establishes his, his, his kingdom, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. See, he's establishing the kingdom with justice from henceforth and evermore. Yes, we are to be merciful. Yes, we are to be forgiving. But that does not negate justice. There are so many scriptures on justice. That was just a couple of them. One day maybe I'll just do a message and just show you how many scriptures is talking about justice. 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 T.D. Jakes knows that. That's why he preached, probably preached, the message right at all those other churches. And what he said at Praise 103.9 was correct. It was right. But when he got to Without Walls Church, in order to defend Paula White, he started lying. He started trying to change everything around. Oh, she doesn't have to be subject to justice. All of a sudden, forgiveness uh, is a contradiction to justice when it comes to Paula White, you see. But I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to show you why he began to uh, pervert the meaning of forgiveness and why it's so contradictory to all the other churches and what he stated at Praise 103.9. Now, in 2008, Paula White preached from the pulpit that African Americans need to pull themselves up by their nappy-headed necks and come to church, whether they felt like it or not. Paula White has never apologized for her racial remarks. She has never been brought to justice. She has never been rebuked by her so-called spiritual father, T.D. Jakes, or anyone else, for that matter, except for myself. It seems that I'm the only one who has enough God and guts in them to rebuke Paula White and demand justice of her. And I'm going to show you the video that's been going around. Now this video has been going around for ever since 2008, but it didn't really uh, get a lot of attention because until I put it on YouTube and on my website. So now many more people all around the nation and around in different countries are seeing this, uh, this um, video. And so it's getting um, attention from the people, but nobody is, is making uh, a public outcry um, for Paula White to be brought to justice, not even T.D. Jakes. Now, we can stand up and demand justice from a sinner. We don't know if Zimmerman even believes in God or not, but we're going to demand that he makes confession. Now, granted, what he did is far, far, far worse than what Paula White has done, but the point I'm making here is this. It doesn't matter how great the crime or how small the crime or the sin or the transgression or the insult. If you believe a thing, you believe it. If you believe in forgiveness and you be believe in justice, then you believe in justice. We go, justice is going to have to be served. Whether you murder somebody or whether you, you insult somebody or whether you beat somebody up, still justice has to be served. You can't just say, because I said, forgive me, I don't have to make restitution. I'm not subject to justice anymore because I said, forgive me. Can you imagine if Zimmerman went to uh, the Martins and said, well, forgive me for killing your son? And they said, okay, you don't have to pay restitution. Go ahead. He said, forgive me. Can you imagine that? I mean, they may do it, but God says... Even when it comes down to an animal, God says, if you kill that man's animal, if you kill a, a horse or a donkey or even if it was by accident, God said, you repay it. You give him another horse. You give him another, another whatever it was that you killed of his animals. Even down to the very animal, you make restitution for it. Even if it was a, an accident. But can you imagine somebody just willfully taking a life, purposely taking somebody else's life and not having to make any kind of restitution at all? Just throw justice out the window? If that's the case, boy, the murder rate will be sky high. Well, I'll just kill him and say forgive, for, forgive me. 
you know, and it'll be done. I don't have to go to jail, won't have to do nothing. We wouldn't be able to walk out of our doors. You might as well throw the law away then. Just forget the law. Just let it be. We'll just be a bunch of anarchists. Just kill and say, forgive me. That's basically what they were doing back in those days. Except they weren't saying, for, they were saying, forgive me, and then they kill an animal and say, okay, I, whatever sin they did, just kill an animal and say, forgive me. And they, they never did quit sinning because they knew it was just that easy. Nothing's going to happen to me. All I got to do is kill a bull and, and, and go to the altar and say I'm sorry, and that's it. That's why Jesus came and put a stop to that because it wasn't doing them any good, animal sacrificing. It did not stop them from sinning. It did not touch their conscience. So I'm going to play the video. It's about 10 minutes long. I'll kind of give you an overview real quick of, of what you're going to be seeing. And many of you probably have already seen it. On my website, it's called a Paula White Racial Insult. That's what it was called also on YouTube before Paula White and T.D. Jakes made false copyright claims and had my YouTube channel um, shut down because of false copyright claims, which I am uh, in the process of fighting now. They made false claims because they did not want you to see all of the truth about Paula White. And T.D. Jakes made his false copyright claim because he did not. And I'll put that. I'll, actually, I'll put uh, the video of T.D. Jakes as well. What he, why he made a false copyright infringement claim to have this video clip taken off YouTube because he did not want you to know the truth about him and Paula White. I'll put that one on this message as well. But first of all, the reason he wrote the book, Let It Go, and went to Without Walls Church on March 16, 2012, and preached the way he did regarding justice, is so that Paula White would not be held to the same standard and brought to justice, the same as anyone else. You heard about Imus. You've heard about how he made that remark and called those women nappy-headed hoes and all of this, and all of what he went through. He lost his job. He lost his television job. He, uh, I think he lost his radio job for a while, and I think he may have gotten his radio job back. But anyway, this is what um, T.D. Jakes is trying to make people forget about. Now, we can bring Imus to justice, demand justice on Imus, take away his job, take away his livelihood, because we are so outraged because of this, this horrible racial insult. And then we look the other way when it comes from Paula White. See, now, T.D. Jakes is a hypocrite. He's sitting right there saying that the justice system has looked the other way one time too many. And yet we're doing exactly what, he's, he, what he is uh, blaming the justice system for. We as black people ourselves, we look the other way too. We claim we're so outraged by, by people and their racial insults and all of this stuff, but then we look the other way as well. We're no better than this, than this wicked justice system that T.D. Jakes is pointing the finger at. Now, I agree with him. I agree with him about the justice system. That's true. They do. They look the other way all the time. But so do we. So how can we sit here and demand justice of them when we don't even demand justice of ourselves? How can we demand justice when we are just as hypocritical as they are? But let's listen. I'm going to let you see the clip, and then I'll come back, and I will um, speak further about this. So listen to this clip. And like I said, it's gotten a lot of attention now, more attention, and uh, people are seeing it. I don't know if anybody's saying anything about it, but I know that they are, are watching it. They're watching it. This, this, this clip is getting around. And so T.D. Jakes is trying to tell the people, when you see this, just let it go. That's what he's, this whole book is called, just let it go. Forget about it. He said, just let it go. I go on and love that person. Take them to dinner. Just let it go. Let it go. So let's listen to the video. Again, it's about 10 minutes long. You may have already seen it. If you have, that's good. If you haven't, then you'll get a chance to see it now. 
simply out of obedience that God says if you don't get planted then you cannot be positioned if you're not positioned you can't take possession so it doesn't matter if I feel like it or not you pull yourself up by your little nappy head and neck say come on in the name of Jesus you put one foot in front of the other you say we will go to the house of the Lord because that's the commandment of God it doesn't matter if somebody doesn't like me somebody looks at me wrong somebody offends me you cannot drive me away from my destiny let's get it started it's on in this place because God has declared some things over my life you pull yourself up by your little nappy head and next Judas turns his back and betrays you with a kiss and you're like what's that nappy breath all on me he's like that and one of the first people to call for firing Don Imus Brian Monroe president of the National Association of black journalists but you like to see him fired all together so you just half satisfied tonight the well, TV show's gone but the radio show might come back well I think you know the steps that were taken today by NBC is 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 absolutely the right thing to do you know we at the National Association of Black Journalists we don't revel in anybody losing their job but what happened uh, last week and in the reaction of the last few days has really sent a signal and I think the steps that NBC has taken were, were the right steps. I just met with uh, Les Moonves at, at CBS uh, about two hours ago and uh, they're struggling with this issue too and, and yeah, they know what the right thing is to do and, and, and I, the I think... the right thing you think is to get rid of the radio show yeah, I don't too. think he should have his, his show anymore. The line in the sand has been drawn today. That's right. This far and no further. What should happen to Don Imus? His comments should cost him his job. It's just, it's just that simple. He, he, he crossed the line. There is more pressure to come. African American activists are planning to send this letter to Imus's remaining advertisers, demanding they withdraw sponsorship. And feminists announced a similar campaign today at a rally at Rutgers University. I'm very proud to tell you that the feminist movement has already distributed over 30,000 emails and we're just getting cranked up. And you must understand 70% of my church is African American, which blows people away in itself. Because our call is number one, to tear down prejudice and walls of racism. Our call is number one, to tear down prejudice and walls of racism. I believe that the reason, one of the reasons that God has birthed me into life and one of my primary purposes, Pastor Michael, is for reconciliation. There's a mantle of God on my life as a reconciler. You'll see that in gender, you'll see that in socioeconomic, you'll see that in, in race. Your weave's not on yet, right? But you're still loved unconditionally. And even when you take your shoes off, your feet even stink. Come on, I know you love God. You pull yourself up by your little nappy head and neck say, come on in the name of Jesus. You put one foot in front of the other. You say, we will go to the house of the Lord. You pull yourself up by your little nappy head and neck say, starting ministry in inner city and ministering in places at Washington, D.C., feeding the homeless, the hurting, going to broken boys and girls. So there, culturally, I understood um, all different aspects of life, from extremely wealthy to extreme poverty, socioeconomic differences, ethnic differences. And the appeal, I always say, you're going to have to ask someone else, but I believe the purpose is to stand as a reconciler, a bridge builder. And so I've stood in a place to always be a bridge between different people and bring together people for the common cause of so Christ. You pull yourself up by your little nappy head and next say, come on in the name of Jesus. I will act like the person I believe I am. And it's very powerful. So our only boundaries in life then become our own perception of potential. And I love this translation. We say, as a man thinketh, so is he. But one of them says, as a man thinks, what he was all along, he acts out. That's good. Oh, and that's so good. what he was all along, he acts out. You pull yourself up by your little nappy head and next say, come on in the name of Jesus. You know, there's a time in life that you just say enough is enough and you draw the line in the sand. The line in the sand has been drawn today. That's right. This far and no further. There has to be a certain understanding of what's in bounds and what's out of bounds. And I think MEC just made that clear. It hasn't been talked about very much. Out in the open next, why his use of the word nappy 
makes so many black women absolutely outraged. Ima says those words were repugnant himself. But the word nappy in particular struck a painful chord of many African-American women who see it as an attack on their natural hair and ethnic identity. Crystal, you obviously think they have done the right thing. I absolutely think that but they've done the right thing. What are you imagining CBS is thinking tonight? Well, they're in a really tough position because they're going to have to perhaps follow suit. I know for me, as a consumer, as a mother of a black daughter who has a certain texture hair, to hear these remarks, to be in school as she is and the only black child there, and the, the stigma, I don't even want to repeat the word because we as black folks in our images, we struggle enough as it is with images in the media that don't glorify and honor us or really just treat us with integrity. I think that their CBS is in a position that they're really going to have to step up to the plate as well and figure out if they want to be associated with someone who made a comment like this. He's a good guy, probably. <laughs> I, can't, I don't know him personally, but he made a bad choice a lot of careers are broken by bad choices. I mean, this man made a horrible mistake, said something really stupid, but I guarantee you 70 stations around the country aren't going to drop him because they never hired him, they never used him to be some moral character to push the issues. They hired him to entertain people, and that's what he's done. He messed hey, up. They never hired him, they never used him to be some moral character to push the issues. There's a mantle of God on my life as a reconciler. You'll see that in gender, you'll see that in socioeconomic, you'll see that in, in race. There has to be a certain understanding of what's in bounds and what's out of bounds. That's a nappy head at all. NBC News says effective immediately it will no longer simulcast Imus's radio program. Adding in a statement, what matters to us most is that the men and women of NBC Universal have confidence in the values we have set for this company. This is the only decision that makes that possible. On the air this morning, Imus indicated that he believed his career was threatened. Imus is still employed by CBS Radio, for now. He has been trying to save his job for the past few days, repeatedly apologizing for his comments about the Rutgers team. I'm enormously grateful that they've agreed to let me come out and talk to him. And but as fast as Don Imus was backing away from his offensive comments, advertisers were backing away from him. General Motors, GlaxoSmithKline, Sprint Nextel, and American Express all said today they are pulling ads from his broadcasts. Other advertisers say they're evaluating whether to drop Imus. We've talked an awful lot about integrity of organizations, employees complaining to NBC executives that this kind of intolerance can't be accepted. But what, at, at the end of the day, what did the pressure of the advertisers pulling out? Well, have on NBC's decision. It was, it was significant. Uh, GM, American Express, Staples, um, all the advertisers uh, that uh, P, uh, Procter and Gamble, they made a decision. It was mainly a business decision, but it was also who do they want to associate themselves with? And you know, you go back to the word sponsor. In the old days, it was the patron. You're associating yourself. You're sponsoring an individual or an organization. And they said, "This is not us." Our call is number one to tear down prejudice and walls of racism. You pull yourself up by your little nappy head and neck say, come on in the name of Jesus. The word nappy in particular struck a painful chord of many African American women who see it as an attack on their natural hair and ethnic identity. The line in the sand has been drawn today. That's right. This far and no further. There has to be a certain understanding of what's in bounds and what's out of bounds.
Now you saw the video. In 2007, Don Imus made the same racial insult against African American women at the um, Rutgers University. And at that time, Brian Monroe and many others demanded justice. They demanded justice. They called for Imus to be fired from his job. Now, Brian Monroe said, fire him from his TV job and from his radio job. He shouldn't have either one of them. Bruce Gordon, he said he should be fired. Then you heard Eleanor Smeal of the Feminist uh, Majority Foundation. They were so all fired up. They had sent out over 30,000 uh, emails. They were just getting cranked up. Uh, I must need, something needs to be done about Imus. Al Sharpton, he was all up into it, I believe. Uh, you know, so many people came out because we were so outraged about this insult. Take away his livelihood. Punish him. Demand justice of him. Even after Imus repeatedly apologized to these young women, he still lost his job. He still had to be punished. He still was subject to justice. Okay? That was April. April the 11th, 2007. So just nine months later, Paula White stands up in the pulpit and preaches her racial insult. The exact same one that Imus used. Even after Brian Monroe said, the line has been drawn today. No more. No further. This is it. And guess what? Nobody said a word. Nobody said a word. But we're so outraged, and we have caused this man to lose his job. He lost all those endorsements, all those um, people who were, all those. You saw all those companies that pulled away from him. All these companies pulled away from him. He lost all these endorsements and everything because we were so outraged that, oh, this is just so offensive. You must be punished. And then when Paula White does it, we look the other way. We're hypocrites. We're no better than this same judicial system that T.D. Jake says looks the other way. So when I heard Paula White preach this uh, racial slur from the pulpit, I made a copy of the, it, the insult. I wrote Brian Monroe. I sent him an email. I sent him a copy of the of the racial slur. I wrote a letter to him. I sent a copy of the letter to Bruce Gordon at CBS News. I sent a copy to Roland Martin at CNN. I sent a copy to Eleanor Schmiel of the Feminist Majority Foundation. I sent a copy of the letter and the, and the video as well so they could see I sent a copy of it to Al Sharpton from the, to the, at the National Action Network, and nobody has yet said a word to Paula White. But we claim that we are so outraged. We are so outraged that we will take away a man's job. Just take away his livelihood. Demand justice of him. And then look the other way when it comes to Paula White. We're hypocrites. We're no better than this Justice Department that, we, that we're so outraged about. The one, you know, T.D. Jakes, the one that looks the other way one time too many, that one, you're a hypocrite. And like I said on this disc, we as black people, we either need to apologize to Don Imus, restore that man's wages, or we gonna have to bring Paula White to justice, or we can just remain hypocrites. We can just remain hypocrites in the eyes of the world, in the eyes of God, and especially, especially Brian Mon Monroe. He did not make a peep. And he was one of the first people to say, fire this man. Take away his job. Like he was so outraged. This is just, this, this, the, the, the line in, in the sand has been drawn today. This far and no further. Okay, Brian. You haven't made one peep. I sent him that letter in 2008, a couple of months after Paula White made the statement, haven't said a word. And now that I put this um, video up on YouTube, like I said earlier, and I still have it on my website, 
I mean, it had, I don't know how many views on uh, YouTube before Paula White, you know, uh, deceptively had the whole channel full. Why is it that we um, can hold one person accountable for the exact same thing? And then we sit up here and we talk about, uh, we as black people, sit here and talk about profiling and racial profiling when we're no better. We may not be quote unquote racial profiling, but we are gender profiling. Oh, it's an outrage to us for a white man to call us nappy headed. Oh, it's an outrage. So it's, we are so outraged. Take his job. Take away his job. Punish him. Make him come to justice. But when it's a female, a Caucasian female, a white woman that insults us, oh, we just look the other way. We're no better. We're, we're, we're doing the same thing, profiling, profiling. Like I said, not racial, but gender, gender profiling. Hang the white man. Hang him out to dry. Cut his testicles off. Take, a, take away his job, whatever. The white woman, just look the other way. Look the other way. And not only, here's the bad part, though. Not only did we not say anything to Paula White, not only did we not demand justice, we actually condone what she's doing. We actually are paying her millions of dollars. Every Wednesday, Thursday, and twice on Sundays, they run to the altar and throw their hard-earned money down. And then she gets a paycheck on top of that from the black people paying her to insult us, standing up on Sunday cheering and oh, woo, 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 at everything she says. Oh, this is our leader. This is our Moses. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, she's our Valentine. We love you. But again, people, as I stated earlier, we're hypocrites. And when uh, it was about, after I wrote the letter, I think it was about a week or so later, Creflo Dollar did the same thing. He made the same racial insult. Nobody said a word to, to Creflo Dollar. I took that and I sent that to Brian Monroe as well and let him hear Creflo Dollar insulting black women using that same racial uh, insult. Brian Monroe did not have said a peep to Creflo Dollar, haven't said a word to him. Oh, but we're so outraged. My hard drive crashed where I had that uh, clip of Creflo on there, but I still have the original disc. I just have to go through my, my disc. I have thousands of these discs that I have to look through. When I find it, I will update this message and let you hear Creflo Dollar as well. Some of you may have even seen it because I passed those out as well with Creflo on it. So you may have seen Creflo on there too, but we haven't done a thing to it. So what do we do? Just profile the white men. Black man can use the racial slur. The white woman, she can use it. Oh, but just don't you use it, white man. We're going to profile you. We're no better than the, the racist white people that we're, that we're fighting against for, ra for racial profiling against black men. We're no better. We're no better than they are. And again, not only, not only did we not punish her in any way at all, we're paying the woman paying her millions of dollars, throwing money at her feet every Wednesday, Thursday, and twice on Sundays, and then writing her a big fat paycheck on top of that, paying her to insult us, paying her to insult us. Oh, but we're so outraged when the white man insults us. We're not going to stand for it. And then you got T.D. Jake out protecting and writing books to protect the perpetrator. If you demanded that I must be fired, then we must demand that Paula White step down. And yes, we can demand it. You no, know, God did not put her there. Man put her there. God did not put her there. She put herself there. And the only way that she's re remaining there is because of our, I won't say our because I don't give her anything, it's because of black people's tithes and offerings. If she doesn't want to step down, then you step away, like God said. Come out from among them and be separate. Separate yourself from this woman. Come out from among her. And then you're going to talk about the justice system. They've looked the other way one time too many. 
Oh, and we're going to demand justice. We're going to demand it. We want justice. We're going to demand justice. We need to demand justice in every situation. Or else, sit down, be quiet, don't demand justice, no time for no reason. If that's going to be the case. You can't be living and having double standards and then go try to hang, and then you come against the system for having double standards. We're living according to double standards ourselves. So we're no better than the people that we're, we're, we're fighting against. We're doing the same thing. But let's go and listen to this clip again. Now I told you to write down some of these things because we were going to come back to some of these things. Now, let's hear T.D. Jakes again. He said an insult against one, any of us is an insult against all of us. And, and, and an insult against any of us is an insult against all of us when all of us pay the taxes and pay the wages of the elected officials who don't want to be held accountable. This is bigger. Okay, so why is it that T.D. Jakes is not insulted by what Paula White says? It's an insult against you as well, T.D. Jakes. If you'd stop shaving your head, Bob, you'd have woolly hair too. If you'd stop shaving your head or nappy hair, as Paula White said, you'd have nappy hair, too, if you stopped shaving it. So it's an insult against you, too. So why are you not insulted? Why, are it, why is it an insult only when the white man or a Caucasian man does something to a black man? Then we're all insulted by that. But when a white woman insults a black woman, especially, and, or, and black men, too, we're not insulted by it. Why is it not an insult to you, T.D. Jakes? Why are you not insulted by it? Let's go to some more of these clips. I want you to hear some more clips of T.D. Jakes when he was preaching at Without Walls International Church. How he totally contradicts what he's saying uh, at Praise 103. Again, like I said, the reason it's contradictory is because when he got to Without Walls Church, he was trying to get these people to let it go when it comes to Paula White. Don't bring her to justice. Don't make her be held accountable for her action and for what she says. So let's listen to some more of the clips. Let's go to the, the next clip of him. What I'm trying to get you to understand is what Matthew says in 5 and 7. is blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. It's a simple principle. It doesn't mean the person was right. It doesn't mean that they were innocent. It doesn't even mean that they asked for forgiveness. It means that you now understand how big people survive. Now there you heard him quoting Matthew chapter 5 verse 7. He said it doesn't even mean that they're right or even that they even ask for forgiveness. I didn't play the whole message but he was saying if you can just forgive that means uh, big people, like people on the top, like leaders and stuff, they survive by forgiving. So you have to be big. God can't use you. If you're going to be a big person, if you're going to be elevated by God, then you have to learn to just let it go, forgive. So he's saying that Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 7 is saying, just forget about it. Don't bring them to justice. And Matthew chapter 5, verse 7 is teaching you how to, how big people survive. It's a lie. That's a lie. That's not what Matthew 5, 7 is trying to teach. But he was just trying to use psychology on the minds of the people. So they can say, oh yeah, I want to be a big person. Because, you know, they all, everybody wants their little old five or ten minutes of fame. Everybody trying to be big time preacher. Everybody want to be a T.D. Jakes or a Joyce Meyer or whatever. They want to be something big. And so this is what he's telling them. He's lying to them. So that they can just, okay, we'll just say, oh, because if I want to be used by God and I want to be big, then I need to forgive Paula White and not bring her to justice. Wrong. Wrong. Let's go to the next clip. I'm going to show you one more principle and I'll close. Jesus is on the cross dying. The guys who nailed him didn't run. He only says seven things while he's dying. Only seven. Only seven. And we've been preaching about them seven things for 2,000 years. But not doing them. 
He says, Father, forgive him. Wait, the blood is running down. He's dying. He's in pain. He's been hurt. He's unconscious. And he's innocent. He's innocent. He didn't do nothing to them people. He didn't do nothing to none of them. And he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now you heard T.D. Jakes talking about the story of Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus said, you know, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is no comparison to what we're talking about to Paula White. Now those people in Jesus' day, they had a Bible, but it was not the Bible. It was their own false doctrine that they had written and put in a book for themselves. Uh, just like back in Josiah's day, how they had hidden the true book of the law, had written their own book, and had been living by their own book for, for generations until when they were pre repairing the temple, they found the true book of the law. And come find out they had been doing all this wrong stuff. wasn't even of God. But the people didn't know any better because the priests had become corrupt. And they just, you know, just like they tell us today, uh, don't question the pastor. You just do what the pastor tell you to do. And they up here misinterpreting the scripture, preaching false doctrine, perverting the gospel. You just believe what they preach and how they interpret it to you. Well, that's basically what they were doing, but they had a whole different book. And so when Jesus got here in, in the New Testament, they were still at the same point. They had a Bible, but it was not the Bible. It had some of God's word in it, but it had mostly theirs in it. So they were living according to a false doctrine. So they had accused Jesus of being possessed of a devil. They accused him of preaching false doctrine because when he started preaching the truth that they had never heard, like what I be preaching, the truth that you've never heard, they said, what new doctrine is this man teaching? He said, this man is a heretic. What new doctrine is this? It wasn't a new doctrine. It's just that it's the truth that they had never heard because it had never been preached. And so they thought all these wicked things of him. Oh, he's not the son of God. He's doing all these miracles. He's casting out devils by the power of the devil. He got a devil himself. You know, they had all this stuff to say about him. And they were wrong. They didn't know. They thought they were really right. Yeah, this man, he, 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 he's not the son of God. So they crucified him. But after they crucified him, and when the ground began to shake and tremble and the earthquake came and the, the veil was rent from top to bottom, they knew then this was the Son of God. They said this was the Son of God. But they really believed in their heart that they were crucifying some devil-possessed, uh, false doctrine, teaching, uh, uh, whatever, man just wanting to be whatever. They just thought, they just thought he was just another T.D. Jakes. In other words, they thought he was just another Paula White. They thought he was just another Benny Hinn. Yeah, just trying to pull your old magic tricks on us. They, that's what they thought. Just another Creflo Dollar. Just another Eddie Long. Just another, uh, another uh, uh, Cheryl Brady. Another Juanita Bynum Weeks. Just another old Jack Lake preacher. Old Jack Lake coming here trying to do his lying wonders using his old witchcraft and magic and stuff on us. No, uh uh. -uh. And, and pretending like he's the son of God, pretending like he's been called by God. And that's just another, another one of them old Jack Lake preachers. But after that ground began to quake, <laughs> they knew then, and they said, this is the son of God. That's why when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know that they really were crucifying the son of God. He said, they don't know no better. That's why he forgave them. But that's a whole different story from Paula White. Paula White knows that Jesus is the Son of God. She claims he called her. She claims to be the oracle of God. She claims to be speaking in tongues. She claims to be the apple of God's eye. She claims that she holds conversations with Jesus. Oh Lord, I said this and God says, Paula, but you know, and I said, God, really? And God says, yes, Paula, do this. And I says, really, God? Oh, God just sits at the table and has tea and crumpets with her daily holding conversations when he didn't even do that with Moses, Elijah, any of the true prophets. Oh, but he's holding conversations daily with Paula and she's just conversing back and forth just like they buddy buddy, you know. So she knows what she's doing and she has to be brought to justice. 
He said, forgive these people because they knew not what they were doing. But Paula knows what she's doing. So you can't try to use that scripture, T.D. Jakes, for them to say, oh, and Jesus forgave them and they didn't even ask for forgiveness. They thought they were killing you, T.D. Jakes. They thought they were killing a jack leg like you, a heretic like you, T.D. Jakes. They thought they were killing one of you word faith movement heretics. Satan's ministers, they thought they were killing one of these devils. But Paula knows better. She knows full well what she's doing. And she claims that always herself talking about, we can't be talking about people, and we can't be doing this, and we can't be doing that. And she's steady doing it herself. And I'm the reconciler. She knows the Almighty God. I'm the, I'm the child of the Most High God. Uh, the Almighty God, the Most High God has called me. The, one of the reasons that I was born into this earth is to be a reconciler between the races. And so I know, I know the culture. And so I know what it is to be, to stand as a bridge between the races. I understand the culture and all of this. She's telling you with her own mouth. She knows better. So she's going to have to be brought to justice. And why not, T.D.? Why not bring her to justice? You're going to demand justice uh, for Zimmerman and everybody else that's <clears throat> done black men wrong and, and done things and said things. You're going to demand justice from Imus. All you guys demanding justice from him. So why not demand justice for Paula? Why? Then going to start lying and twisting the scriptures and misinterpreting the scriptures to protect this perpetrator. Let's listen to another clip of T.D. Jakes. Here's the killer. Some of you are not going to forgive until they get it right. You're not going to forgive until they pay you. You're not going to forgive until they admit they were wrong. You're not going to forgive until they tell the truth. Well, you may die unforgiving. Now there you heard T.D. Jakes stating that some of, he says, some of you are not going to forgive until they get it right, meaning the perpetrator, or until they pay you, or and some of you are not going to forgive until uh, they admit that they're wrong, or in other words, until they confess. Now, isn't that what he said, that we should not forgive Zimmerman because he has not confessed? How can we forgive what we are grumbling to understand, what he has not confessed? And now he's telling the people at Without Walls that they should forgive even if the person hasn't confessed. But again, he was saying this in defense of Paula White. You see. Because they, he wants them to let it go. Let Paula White continue to, to uh, calm them out of their tithes and offerings. Let Paula White continue to, to be in lead over them and insult them anytime she feels like it. He's trying to keep Paula White in a job and a position, you see. This is what they do, people. T.D. Jakes doesn't give a rat's behind about the congregation. He is defending Paula White. He said, well, he says, some of you might die unforgiving. Well, that's what he said when it comes to Zimmerman. If, as Zimmerman already said that he's going to plead not guilty. He's not going to confess to it. We know he murdered him, so I don't know what he's pleading not guilty to. But anyway, he said that's what he, he's not going to confess. He's not going to admit it. He said he's going to still stick out to his lie. So therefore, I guess we, the black people, and the parents of Trayvon Martin will probably end up dying before we forgive this man then. Because T.D. Jake said we, are, we cannot forgive them unless they confess. Now, now look at this, people. Let's, let's stop right here for a minute. Here we are holding... Now, we don't know if the man's a Christian or not, but we're holding him to a much higher standard than we are to the woman who claims to know God, who claims to be already set free, born again, speaking in tongues. And we're going to hold the worldly people, we're going to hold the sinner to a higher standard than a saint? Really? I think you got this thing backwards, people. You can't hold somebody accountable for, like he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. But of course Zimmerman did know what he, he was doing. But I'm just making a, a, a comparison here. If you were, to, you were to associate Zimmerman with those people that were at the cross uh, that killed Jesus and was gambling for his clothes, that would be Zimmerman. That's, that's who you would compare him to. Now see what I believe in Imus's case. See, Imus, he says he has a black friend, but 
obviously his friend is one of those little self-hating black people who go around making racial insults himself. So uh, he, I mean, you could almost clearly tell that this is what it is. Because how would I must know to even say anything like that, them nappy-headed hoes? Because he hears this black man sitting here talking about black women, calling them nappy-headed hoes. So I must, with his dumb self, he just going to get up there and repeat something he heard this man saying and got his butt in a bunch of trouble. And bunch of nappy-headed hoes just because he hear his friend talking like that with his dumb self. And he going to get up there and say it. Because I guess he figured, well, it's all right to say it. A uh, black Johnny or whatever, black Bobby or whatever his friend's name is, he's saying it. That's how, he, that's how they talk, you see. And then he got his butt in a bunch of hot water behind it. Because he's hanging around with some self-hating black man who have no self-worth, obviously, and no self-respect. And then he repeats something that he heard. I believe that's what happened to Imus. You know, he was just saying something, he just talking with his stupid self. But her, she's purposely making these insults. She means to attack black women. She means to harm you. And she continues on. Continues to, to hurl insults. There's another um, message that I preached uh, a couple of years ago that has gotten a lot of attention as well. And it is Paula White's false testimony. It's disc five of her false testimony. I titled it, Nothing But Niggers in D.C. Because according to this man and his testimony, he says he will swear on a stack of Bibles that Paula White told him that. He said that she told him she was thrilled to get out of Washington, D.C. because it was nothing but niggers up there. And like I've told you, Paula White is just using black people. She's just using you for your money. And she's using you to get your soul. So what he's trying to do, people here at church, trying to get those people out without walls to continue to sit up under this, this uh, woman who continues to purposely offend them, steal their tithes and offerings. Woman doesn't give a rat's behind about them. All she cares about is controlling them and getting their money and their souls. They don't care about the flock. It's these wicked pastors that stand in defense of each other, as I said earlier, just like he stood in defense of Eddie Long. He stood in defense of Eddie Long, the perpetrator. They always try to uphold these wicked pastors because they're just alike. They're just alike. That's why they uphold each other. They're all full of the same wickedness. They're all just as corrupt as the, as the next one is. This is the end of disc one.